On the part of the left, you'll see an old snow plow. Oil tanker car, gravel dump car, small switching engine, and a speeder. These, along with our two steam locomotives and most of our rolling stock, including all the cars we're riding on, were purchased from the West Side Lumber Company in Wallaby, California, about 100 miles north of here. They had operated a steam logging company right up until the early 1960s. Logging began here in the Central Sierras in 1874 with the California Lumber Company. Then in 1899, the Madera Sugar Pine Lumber Company started their operation. They became one of the largest and most profitable lumber companies in the West. When they voluntarily went out of business in 1931, they scrapped all their equipment and lifted up all their tracks. After our purchase from West Side in 1965, all the equipment down here relayed the track. But one of the oldest spurs used by the lumber company from 1908 until 1924. In a moment, you'll see a power pole on the left, and you can look out across the canyon and see Mount Raymond, the low grade 500 feet. To give you an idea of the scope of the operation of the lumber company, this was just one of many spurs they used. It went to the base of that mountain. They would log up to the tree line, bring the logs around the mountain, back down this spur into the canyon below. During their operation, they logged more than 30,000 acres. And in those days, they did clear cutting. So when they cut down almost all the trees, they didn't replant. So the trees we're seeing in the forest today are relatively young, 100 years of age or so, and they're all descendants of the few trees left over by the lumber company. The Sierra National Forest is made up of a lot of different types of trees, but in this area there's five primary trees. The first one I'm going to talk about is the California Black Oak. They weren't used too much by the lumber company for lumber, but they were used to fuel all their steam locomotives, donkey engines, and the mill was entirely steam operated. But for centuries before, the Native American Indians, which would be the Miwok tribe, gathered the acorns, grind them up, and then soak them in a creek for a couple of days to remove the tannic acid. Once dried, they were the main source of the protein in their diet. And on our trip, we'll see some trees that look a little bit like sequoias. They'll be the ones with the rough, reddish looking bark. These are instant cedar trees. Some of them look like they've been burnt. As they powder mold and destroy on the bark, it doesn't seem to hurt the trees, so the lumber wood is hard to see. Thank you. 
built in 1928. She's a 12-wheel drive, oil-burning locomotive. On this four-mile trip, she burned 40 gallons of oil to more than 400 gallons of water. And weighing in at 84 tons, she's the largest shape built for the narrow gauge. The gauge is the distance between the two rails. Narrow gauge is 36 inches. As compared to standard gauge, which is 56 and a half. Our company liked the narrow gauge because they did not cut such a wide road that the forest to lay the track down. They could also make much tighter turns follow the contours of the mountain. But probably more importantly, the Shea locomotives are built mainly on the narrow gauge format. And the lumber companies in the Midwest and the West like the shape for the ease of maintenance with the exposed tension and drive train. For their pulling power, they could pull 12 to 14 percent grade. And they can make tight turns. Number 10 was designed to make a 70 degree turn, but she likes both shapes have a top speed of only about 15 miles an hour. 